beloved one, I hope you are doing well. I want us to take a short reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 127. It says, if God's grace doesn't help the builders, they will labor in vain to build a house. If God's mercy doesn't protect the city, all the centuries will circle it in vain. It's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep. Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy any time we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so on you and you here. And then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too. You were blessed son. Stay blessed. Second Corinthians 13. Open your eyes, open your ears, and then you'll understand that the Lord is here. Open your eyes, please open your ears, so you will understand. That the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Open your ears. And then you'll understand. That the Lord is here. Open your eyes. Please open your ears. Then you understand that the Lord is here. Second Corinthians 13. Please make sure you write every scripture. Second Corinthians 13. I found this scripture some years ago and it, it shook me to my foundation. Verse 8. If you are there, please let's read it. One to read. For we can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth, what a dangerous statement. He said, for we can do nothing against the truth. That means you can argue it. Hallelujah. You can explain it away. You can trivialize it. But the truth remains truth. Hallelujah. Paul speaking said, we can do nothing. That's why when the truth died and they buried the truth, they paid people to lie that the truth did not resurrect. The truth found its way out. Are you listening to me? The Bible says we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. There, there are certain truths in scripture. Please listen very carefully. There are certain truths in scripture that are timeless. They have been there before our forefathers were born. They will be there till Jesus comes. Hallelujah. Timeless truth. For instance, the biblical pathway to be born again is to confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Correct? There will never come a principle that there is a way of laying hands upon people that gets them born again. No. Hallelujah. So no matter what kind of teaching we bring up in church, it remains that the biblical way to lead people to Christ is that they confess the lordship of Jesus Christ and they mean it. Truth does not change. 
philosophies can change listen to me carefully ideologies can change opinions can change according to society levels of exposure education and you name it but the truth of god's word cannot change the bible says there is nothing that can be done against the truth but for the truth say amen, amen. do you believe that and so a believer is a wise believer if he aligns himself with the truth is that correct because whether or not for instance if you say jesus is not lord it doesn't take him away from his throne does it there are myriads of angels calling him lord day after day night after night if satan deceives certain people and make himself look mighty does that mean satan is mighty for there is nothing that can be done against the truth but for the truth never forget this for the rest of your life i found this in 2006 and it changed my life every time i saw truth i respected it because it's already you are already on the path of defeat and failure if you are fighting against the truth he said for there is nothing that can be done against the truth hallelujah so we're going to be considering some truths timeless truths and we'll be putting a balance to the teaching principles of wealth and prosperity hallelujah praise the lord the first thing i need you to know is that god's prosperity plan is available for everybody please write it see in, in my journey in the word and the study of God's principles, I found some things that have made me respect God and fear him. We'll be examining some of these scriptures. The first is Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Acts 10 verse 34. Oh, you will be blessed tonight. You will be mightily blessed tonight. Acts 10 34. This was in the house of Cornelius. They had neglected the Gentiles because they thought that they were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and so they would not participate in the redemption. Now they were surprised when Peter began to speak to the Gentile uh, believers. Verse 34. And Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is what? No respecter of persons. Is that in your Bible? God is what? No respecter of persons. 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. Say after me, God is no respecter of persons. That means there is no excuse whatsoever. This is truth. Peter said, of a truth. And I've shown you that the Bible says there is nothing you can do against the truth but for the truth he said of a truth i perceive that god is no respecter of persons but that in every nation america britain are you listening to me that means there is no excuse whether geographical location whatever it is is irrelevant i'm telling you mm. of a truth in every nation he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted by him next scripture romans 10 verse 12. romans 10 verse 12. are you there want to read for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. He said there is neither who. That means there is no third world nation. There is no first world nation. Those things are just economic jargons. Let me tell you. In the eyes of God. He said there is neither Jew nor Greek. 
But God is rich unto every man. Tonight you'll be hearing many truths that will shock you and abuse many things that you have believed and held on to. Then we'll balance the ones that need to balance. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Listen to me. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord in UK, in America, in Israel, in Iraq, in Iran, God has promised that whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Is that correct? We have people born again in Iraq. We have people born again in Kuwait. We have people born again in South Africa. We have people born again in Zimbabwe. In other words, God is rich unto all men. Are you listening to me? The truth of God is a symbol of his justice and his fairness to all men. And the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. Praise the Lord. So the prosperity package of God is available unto everybody. But listen, it is available to everybody but it's not accessible to everybody. Not everybody will walk in it. It's only accessible to those who are careful enough to diligently find out God's program. Not Nigeria's program. Not America's program. Not the 21st century program. Thank God for all of the education and the packages and all of this. But let me tell you the truth. The word of God stands forever. And there is nothing that can be done against the truth. But for the truth. Are you getting blessed tonight? Praise God. What is prosperity? I want to shock you tonight. Let me tell you what prosperity is not. Having your needs met is not prosperity. It's called welfare. Are you listening to me? Having your needs met is not what the Bible calls prosperity. We are beginning to balance the gospel of prosperity now. Because for many believers, our, the circumference of our concept of prosperity is that I come to a point where I have a job or I have whatever and I have enough for myself, my wife and my children. Having, meeting the ability to meet your need is not called prosperity. It's called welfare. You are faring well if your needs are met. You can afford the fees of your children you have. You are not lacking something to eat. The biblical definition of prosperity is given in scripture. Genesis 12. Don't open there. Genesis 12 verse 2. When you read Genesis 12 verse 1 and 2, the God called Abraham out and he said, I will bless you and you will be a blessing. He said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So, prosperity is not having money to feed yourself, to feed your family, give your mother some, give your father some. That's not prosperity. That's welfare. Many prosperity preachers are still in the realm of welfare. Are you listening to me? And what many believers call the prosperity package of God is just welfare. They have not even entered what the Bible defines as prosperity. Prosperity is being so blessed. So blessed that you become a blessing to others. You must, in God's prosperity package, you must become a blessing to others. By virtue of what God has done in your life. I can tell you the truth. There are many rich people, but there are no prosperous people. Very few prosperous people, according to God's standards. So prosperity is being blessed to be a blessing. Being blessed to be a blessing. The second thing I want you to know about prosperity is that prosperity is not limited to financial resources. I cannot tell you this enough. Prosperity, biblical prosperity is not limited to financial blessings alone. This is where a lot of people get it wrong. Because many prosperity messages camp around finances. And they stop there. 
The Bible says in Genesis 24 verse 1, the Bible says, and Abraham was old and stricken in age. It says, and God had blessed him in all things. All things. Say after me, all things. So, prosperity is, is your, your excelling in every area of life. Spiritually, financially, hallelujah, in your family, when all around you is well with you. The Bible says God gave the, uh, the, the, um, Solomon, was it Solomon or David? Rest round about. Prosperity is not just limited to finance. Are you listening to me? So, I, I, I need us to have a switch in mindset so that you, when we talk about prosperity, you don't just limit it. The word prosperity means to prosper. To prosper means to advance. To move forward. To excel. To lead. Hallelujah. This is the concept of prosperity that has not been understood in the church. Because everybody just says, ah, all they are claiming it and jumping and receiving it. Everything is just around themselves. The man of God and himself or the church members and them and their ministry. That's not prosperity. That's welfare. And that is no different from what the world is doing. Hallelujah. Say I'm prosperous. Say it, I'm prosperous. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now I'll be sharing with you powerful principles. Obedience, number one. Obedience is the gateway to a life of true prosperity. Obedience. Don't trivialize what I'm sharing. Don't trivialize it at all. Many of you will rejoice on the strength of this revelation many years to come. Obedience is the gateway. Obedience is the gateway to a world of wealth, prosperity, finance. Job 36 verse 11. Job 36 verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. Job, before Psalms. Job 36 verse 11. If they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. This is God's word. If, if, that means you have a choice. He said, if they obey and serve him, they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. This is the immutable counsel of God. And I began by telling you, you cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. If ye obey and serve him. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man who feared the Lord. Who delighted greatly in his commandments. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. This is where we get the concept of generational blessing. The Bible says the generation of the upright. You see true prosperity. True prosperity moves beyond you. Are you listening to me? True prosperity moves beyond you. It says the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 if you are there. One to read. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endure forever. This is to those who delight in obeying the commands of God. He said, first his seed shall be mighty. So when you talk about Copeland, you hear the name Copeland, there is a generational blessing. His seed shall be mighty. Hallelujah. He says the generation of the upright will be blessed. What our forefathers transferred to us in Nigeria are all kinds of causes and all kinds of satanic things. We woke up to meet a heritage of woes in Nigeria. And if we don't do something about it, we'll pass it to our generation. But God forbid in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. I love that scripture. 
Obedience. Obedience. Obedience to the principles of God is what will guarantee. I, I tell you the truth. Listen to me. Please listen to me. These are irrefutable principles. They will never be broken according to the integrity of God. Listen, the Bible says God searched for a man who was greater than to swear by. And finding no man, God swore by himself. That by these two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. He said, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the word that proceeds from my mouth. God can be trusted. It is on account of his integrity that we can have the confidence to obey his principles. Say amen. amen. So obedience. There are many people who talk prosperity, who jump and claim prosperity, but are not ready to bear the responsibility of obedience. Let me tell you something. If you like, go to Oxford, Harvard, go to um, whatever you want to go if you do not obey the principles of God you will never get prosperity God's way hallelujah you believe that you cannot do anything against the truth obedience say after me obedience obedience when I began to search for this thing I started saying Lord you must open my eyes to the revelation of your word. There's something that I need to know. I don't want to give my generation a heritage of, 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 of poverty and weakness because it does not glorify God. Let me tell you straight to the point. God is not glorified in your poverty. Write it and never forget it. Nobody will preach me into believing that God is glorified in any man's poverty. You can accomplish more for the kingdom if you are blessed. Hallelujah. There is a world dying out there and you can never help the poor by being one of them. More families have been broken as a result of financial issues than the manifestation of demons and evil spirits. There are many, many children who cannot afford to go to school. There are many families that cannot afford a meal. You're not going to just talk and pamper them. It will take the manifestation of kingdom wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I began to study this subject of prosperity to find out what the Bible really teaches about this truth because there are all kinds of teachings and now I've listened to different versions and varieties of the prosperity message. Hallelujah. And I found an interesting scripture and this is where our journey will start tonight. Hallelujah. Isaiah 51. Thank you Jesus. The Lord is changing somebody this night forever. Forever. And I mean it from the depths of my heart. Hmm. Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51. Are you there? Verse 2. It says, look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. He said, look unto Abraham. So God is saying, my portrait, my definition of what I call a prosperous person is Abraham. He said, look unto Abraham, thy father, and unto Sarah your mother. He said, I called him alone. I blessed him and I increased him. So tonight we will look on to Abraham. Abraham is the biblical portrait of God's idea of a blessed man. Are you listening to me? Not the rich people that you have read their books. Thank God for all of them. But let me tell you something. God's idea, his portrait of a blessed man is in the person of Abraham. 
Isaiah 51 verse 2. I was shocked when I found this scripture. He said, look, there are only two people in the Bible as far as I know that the Bible says we should look up to. One is Abraham. Second, he said, looking up to Jesus. So he said, look up to Abraham. There is a message in the life of Abraham that is that needs to be gotten by the body of Christ. Look unto Abraham. He said, I called him alone. Look unto Abraham, your father. He says, and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and I blessed him and I increased him. We sing a lot of songs. Abraham's blessings are mine. And when Jesus began to talk to the Jews, because they claimed they knew Abraham and that the lineage of the Jewish nation started from Abraham. Let me show you something. John 8, quickly. John 8. Listen to an interesting statement that Jesus made to them. John 8, 39. The Jewish people were angry because they claimed that they were free. Are you there, verse 39? And they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If you were Abraham's children, what would happen? You would do the works of Abraham. Are you following me now? This is Jesus talking to the Jews. He's saying you people always claim Abraham is your father. But you are not doing what Abraham did. And in Isaiah 51, he said, look unto Abraham. There is something Abraham did that made me to present him as the portrait of the man that God has blessed. Look unto Abraham. So the foundation of true biblical prosperity is when you begin to study this man called Abraham. There are certain steps that Abraham took. There are certain things that he did. Are you following me now? And that if any believer, I don't care who you are, I don't care what's your level of education, listen, prosperity is not about business alone. It's not about job. All of those things come later. The foundation of prosperity is a proper understanding of God's word. I wish the graduates in Nigeria knew this truth. Are you listening to me? Biblical prosperity is not just opening a shop and let go. No, 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 no. Just keep all those things first. There is an understanding there is a foundation. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, that body, for I called him alone, and I blessed him, and I increased him. So let's examine the life of Abraham. Unfortunately, when many people begin to teach on the biblical prosperity message, they don't even talk about Abraham. They begin to talk about themselves and their shoes and their suit and so on and so forth. Bible says, look unto Abraham. So what can we find in the life of Abraham? Number one, the principle of tithing. Abraham was a tither. Genesis 14. Please write it. Irrefutable truths and foundations that can turn any man i don't care what the disadvantage is if god be god his word is true and you can stake him at his word number one is the principle of tithing the bible says in genesis 14 there's no time for us to to go there the bible says how that when abraham went to war to go and bring back his 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 brother Lot and all his goods and everything. The Bible says they spoiled the enemies that they went for war against. And the Bible says when Abraham came, he met a man called Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High. And Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says Abraham gave him a tithe. Of his spoils look unto Abraham your father I'm giving you see God's prosperity package 
let me tell you the truth is not a mystery i'm demystifying it for you tonight it's not a mystery just like you go to school and you can know that you know some things you can get these principles say amen look unto your father abraham the first thing we see in the life of abraham is that abraham was a tighter abraham was a tighter so number one principle is tithing right your tithing what is your tithe a tithe is the tenth portion of your income a tenth portion of your increase proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 honor the lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase verse 10 so shall thy bands be full and thy vats to overflowing the principle of tithing now many believers have been taught different concepts about tithing let me tell you something friends if you do not tithe, you are scripturally entitled to a life of poverty. Scripturally. If you do not, I don't care what else you do. I don't care whether you work in the presidency. I assure you, your prosperity will not last. Say after me, tithing. Tithing is the key that opens the heavens. That key that opens up the heavens and is the foundation for lasting abundance. Leviticus 27 verse 30. We're looking up to Abraham. Leviticus. I really want to finish this. Because the Lord is answering somebody's prayer point tonight. Prosperity is not just the issue of prayer and say, Lord, bring money. Tonight you will see that you will pray that prayer forever and you will not get an answer. Hallelujah. Hmm. Leviticus 27 verse 30. Are you there? And all the tithe of the land, whether of seed, whether of the seed of the land, all of the fruit of the tree is the Lord's. It is holy unto God. All the tithes. Say all. all. Not some. All the tithe of the land belongs to God. Your tithe is 10%. The Bible says it is holy. It's an instruction. It's an admonition. It's part of God's economic system. That for every true believer and everyone that cares to receive the package of God's blessings, your tithe is the number one. There are many believers who do not tithe. I know many prayer warriors who are poor and they are broke. I know many people who are full of revelations. I know all kinds of people. Let me tell you something, friends. Your tithe opens the heavens. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12. It says, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? That's the question. Will a man rob God? And there are many robbers of God in the church. Many pastors, members, sincere people, but robbers of God. He said, will a man rob God? He said, yet ye have robbed me. And they say, wherein have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and offerings. Listen, he said, you are cursed. Can I tell you something? This is not the cause of the law. Hello? This is not the cause of the law. This is the cause that comes as a direct result. The word cause there means woe. I tell you sincerely, if you, if you are not a faithful tither, the hardship of your life have not started yet. Show me a man who has all the blessings in the world and is not a faithful tithe. I don't envy his blessings. Hallelujah. The recession brought a lot of arrogant economic theories to their knees. 
and prove that only they that stand with the Lord will last forever. Do you believe that? Till tomorrow we are still speaking about Abraham. Listen, Israel, the biological son of Abraham, has become a nation today, the nation Israel. The nation Israel is still a prosperous nation today. A nation that is on deserts, they farm on rocks, yet they are exporting food. Are you listening to me? Surrounded by every atmosphere of hostility, but they are still standing strong. As a Jewish nation, dispersed for many years, and they came back together and they still understood their language. The best students in Harvard today are Jewish students. The very best. The best of business owners in America today are Jewish people. Because he says, blessed is the man that fears God. His seed shall be mighty. Are you listening to me? Today, people troop to Israel again and again to go for pilgrimage. But he said, if you claim Abraham is your father, then do what Abraham did. Otherwise, you are a hypocrite. Are you following me now? So, number one principle is what? Tithing. The Bible says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes. Say after me, all the tithes. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house. He said, and prove me, test me, commit my integrity, said the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. He said, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cut its young before its time. He said, you will be called blessed and you will be a delightsome land. Seven prophetic blessings that follow Titus. I called Abraham alone, naive, taught him certain principles. And I produced a wonder, a portrait of a prosperous man. Say after me, I receive grace to tithe. Listen. Tithing. Tithing is the foundation of your prosperity. Are you listening to me? Many people give all kinds of excuses. Ah, my parents gave their tithe in their salary. Oh, our pastor said this and that. Any man that teaches you not to tithe, even if he loves you, is wrecking your financial destiny. I say it again and I will repeat it. Any man, I don't care who, who teaches you that you should not tithe and just says one day things will work for you except this scripture can be broken. And the Bible says you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Any man who is not a faithful tither is doomed to fail in his finances. Prosperity will be far from you, I assure you. Did you know that even secular people who are not born again practice the principle of tithing? They may not call it tithing, but 10% of many corporations today that are some of the leading corporations, 10% and even more are given. They ignite this principle. Look unto Abraham. Say, I receive grace to be a tither. See, tonight there are many of you that it is, there is no devil stopping you from your prosperity. It's your greed. And Satan keeps deceiving you and makes you think if you give or if you give your tithe, how much do you have? And you say, one day when I start working, the problem is this. It is your tithing that brings you into blessings. Hallelujah. Abraham gave a tithe. Number two, Abraham was a sacrificial giver. Your giving. Your giving. Abraham was a giver. Genesis 18 verse 1 to 8. Write it. We don't have time to read it. But the Bible makes us to understand that Abraham was just sitting down and taking fresh air outside. Suddenly he saw three people coming. He didn't even bother to find out whether they came to kill him or not. The Bible says he ran to meet them. And he told them, he said, you are welcome. You are welcome to my house. Come and sit down. He, he said they gave them water to wash their feet. He ran immediately and went and caught a lamb. He told his wife, get flour. Prepare food for these people. And the Bible says, a liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that waters shall himself be watered. 
Proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25. A liberal soul shall be made fat. There are many greedy and stingy people in the church. And they will never ever, never break that barrier of poverty. Be educated, get PhD, get masters, go to Harvard, go. If you are not a giver, forget about prosperity. Are you getting blessed tonight? Your giving is tied to the principle of sowing and reaping. Genesis 8.22 The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease as long as the earth remains. That means this principle is in motion. If you do not sow anything, brothers and sisters, let me tell you the sincere truth. You will not receive anything. Agriculture teaches us that, correct? Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Don't give and it shall not be given unto you. Period and full stop. Don't give and it shall not be given unto you. The Bible says good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said for with the same measure you give, don't let anybody deceive you that the size of your seed does not matter. Agriculture teaches us more than that. The Bible says, He that soweth sparingly, 2 Corinthians 9, shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. The Bible says, Let every man, according as he has purposed in his heart, give cheerfully and not grudgingly for God loves a cheerful giver the next verse says and God is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work he said he which gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater that means out of every resource that comes there is bread and there is seed hallelujah if you sow your bread, you are not wise. If you eat your seed, you are not wise. For everything God gives you, there is bread and there is seed. Many people eat everything. Once you get it, it's going to your mouth straight. Whose God is their belly? Are you learning something tonight? Say I'm a giver. Break the shackles of greed in your life. And I'm telling you, you will step. I don't care who you know. Or Paul said, no, we know man after the flesh. This is not an issue of connection. I know this, I know that. that. That's not the issue. For Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says, God is alert and active, watching over his word to perform it. And if God be God, then his word cannot be broken. Irrefutable principles. Your tithing, number two, your giving. Hmm. So we see that Abraham was a giver. Genesis 1, 18 verse 1 to 8. And the Bible says in Proverbs 11 verse 24 and 25, a liberal soul shall be made fat. Hallelujah. I told you according to Genesis 24 verse 1, that prosperity is not just limited to finances. The Bible says God bless Abraham in all things. All things. Hallelujah. Prosperity. This has been our secret as individuals and as a ministry. Listen, I learned this from Bishop David Oedepo some years ago. He shared a powerful principle. He said in 1987, the Lord told him that he has started prospering as a person, but his ministry, let me tell you something. And this is what preachers miss. Do you know, if I am prosperous as a preacher, all right, and if you are prosperous as a preacher and the members of your ministry are not prosperous, the yoke will kill you. Are you listening to me? There are many preachers who are prosperous, but they are not teaching their members. And so they are dying alone. Praise the Lord. 
and he said the lord told him he said he was meditating and the lord told him he said do you realize that abraham did not go to battle alone correct he went with some people so that spoil was not just for him alone so when he came and he gave the tithe he gave the tithe on behalf of other people too i told him that's the secret of corporate growth are you listening to me and from the very first day by the grace of god that koinonia started we don't owe god as a ministry one naira in time this is the secret behind the blessing it's not a mystery are you listening to me it's not some mystery some some magic no there are ministries that don't tight they don't care they've been there for 10 years 20 years no improvement no growth and they give all kinds of lousy excuses they've tried all kinds of economic theories the secret is tithing hallelujah do you believe what i'm teaching you well whether you believe it or not one day you will believe it certainly everybody in hell is a believer the only issue is that they believe too late The key to open heavens over a ministry, over any organization, I don't care what it is, tight. Say after me, tight. If you don't, there is no future. There is no future for any financial future, prosperity future, for any ministry or any organization that is not faithful in tithing. And let me tell you, the secret of getting the blessings of tithing is consistency. Write it. Many of you tithe, but you are not consistent. You do it once in a while. One day when there is a spiritual, emotional high, then you get, no. Consistent tithing. Consistent tithing. The Bible says, and if the cloud be full of rain, they will empty themselves. Thank you, Jesus. Giving is the key to increase. Giving is the key to continuous blessings. Shall men give? Shall men give? Not shall angels give. Your prosperity. I don't believe in what they call wealth creation. There's nothing called wealth creation. I believe in wealth transfer. There's no new money that has fallen from anywhere. It's only been transferred from one geographical location to the other. Shall men give? I hear a lot of people, our, our scripture, we like that scripture. Oh, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Massive wealth transfer is coming. Hold on. Hold on. I've read it too. But let me shock you. Because according to God's wealth transfer plan, some believers are also going to be victims. The Bible says the man with one talent, they collected it from him. He was part of the three. And they gave the man who had five. Oh, we are talking it. Talking. <laughs> Let me tell you, before you talk it, make sure that all the principles are there. Otherwise, you will talk yourself to frustration. I assure you. I assure you. We've examined the word of faith already. I don't need to go back into it. Are you listening to me? Obedience. Deuteronomy 18 verse 1. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all that I command thee this day that the Lord will set thee above on high and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. It shall come to pass if you hearken to his voice and you obey no matter who you are. See, God is not a respecter of men but is a respecter of his word. The Bible says he exalts his word even above his name. Hallelujah. So your tithing and your giving. Your giving is the same as your sowing. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says, He that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully. So we see sowing there. He said, every man as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give. So he links sowing to giving and receiving to harvest. 
And the Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time. See, when you see certain people make some statements, it's not because they are, they are talkatives. It's because they have taken God by his word. And on account of the integrity of God, they can beat their chest. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. He's not a stranger to me. I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed. I want you to leave here tonight with a depth of persuasion. Hallelujah. Now, God's, God's economic system works on what we call a reward system. A reward system. That means when you adhere to his principles, there are channels through which God will honor his word back to your life. There are many titers, there are many givers, but they do not know how the return channels of God. They don't know how these blessings of God comes and manifest physically and that's what I want to teach you tonight. The concept of kingdom wealth and prosperity is not so complicated. It's just that many here but very few obey. Obedience is not a little issue. Many people see obedience as small children's talk. As you rise higher in the spirit, you find out that obedience is a symbol of true spiritual maturity. The Bible says when you are young, you are allowed to go wherever you want to go. But as you become matured, someone will hold your hands. That's a sign that you are matured. So God's economic system works on what I call a reward system. Say after me a reward system. That means if I'm faithful in tithing and I'm faithful in giving, how do these spiritual realities begin to translate and manifest into my life? Number one, the doorways, you can write, doorways to the physical manifestation of wealth and prosperity. After you have obeyed in consistent tithing, after you are faithful in sacrificial giving, not based on emotions, based on revelation. These are the things to expect. This is how God opens up these doors. Number one, divine favor. Divine favor. Psalm 44 verse 3, divine favor. Please, let's hurry up quickly. Psalm 44. Anybody there? Doorways to the physical manifestation of these blessings. Psalm 44 verse 3. He said, for they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast favor upon them. So when you become a faithful tighter, when you become a committed and ardent sacrificial giver, the first thing that begins to happen in your life is undeniable favor. These are gateways to the manifestation. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. And I hope you know that Jesus was a giver. Jesus was a faithful giver. John 13 verse 27 to 29. The Bible says that when Jesus was at table with the disciples... He told Judas, he said, that which you would do, do it quickly. Hallelujah. And Judas got up and the people were confused. And it was one of two things. They said either he was going to go and prepare the place for feast or to give to the poor. That means it was, Jesus was a giver. He was such a giver that he gave himself. Hallelujah. Jesus was such a giver that he didn't just give of his substance. He gave himself. Hallelujah. So divine favor. Psalm 102 verse 13. Look at it quickly. 102 verse 13. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. Next verse. Exodus 12 36. 
It's pure Bible studies tonight. Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they gave unto them such things as they required and they despoiled the Egyptians. He said the Lord gave what? Favor. And as a result, the Egyptians got what they required. So if you are faithful, I'm telling you how God's economic system works. When you are faithful in tithing, you are faithful in giving, suddenly you begin to see a manifestation of consistent favor. I'm not talking of once in three years. Once in consistent favor. Consistent favor. Hallelujah. Leviticus 26 verse 9. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Shadow Bakura Oh, I have a glorious future. I'm confident. Confident. See, when you know something, you know it. You know it. Nobody can take it away from you. Knowledge is an asset. Hallelujah. My greatest asset is the word of God. Verse 9. I found this scripture and it shocked me. Leviticus 26 verse 9. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. He said for I will have respect. That's another word for favor. Some versions say I will favor you. He said I will have respect for you. I will multiply. So that's favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. Say, I have favor. In the name of Jesus. Number two. Wisdom. 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 Proverbs 8. Many people do not know the power of wisdom. Wisdom is not common sense. It's not common Wisdom. Proverbs 8. Are you receiving something tonight? Proverbs 8. Mm. I tell you, somebody is changing in this place. I know it. I know it by the Spirit. Many of you, you will write some of these things and generations, you will literally liberate your lineage and bring a new story to your heritage. I believe this in the name of Jesus. I truly believe this. You may be in the crowd. Some of you may be outside. Nobody is seeing you. But this word, there is a spirit of the word that will enter you and distinguish you. 14. This is wisdom speaking. He said, counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. He said, by me, kings reign kings don't reign by talking and stories and jargons they reign by wisdom those who are ahead in life reign by wisdom this is not an issue of age this is not an issue of status when the wisdom of god mantles you you will do wonders no matter how young you are i tell you you will do things that will shock people men will look at you you are operating from a frequency that is not known to man job said there is a part where no foul knoweth, the eyes of the vulture has not seen. Doth not wisdom cry? This is not knowledge. This is not head knowledge. It's not Sophia. It's a higher plane of existence. Kaboka tabalada. When the heavens are open over you, you become an unending wonder. Men sit down and say, "From they looked at Jesus, they said, what wisdom." If men do not talk about your wisdom, then you are just a talkative. Uncommon wisdom is a mark of God upon a man. And you cannot, you cannot equate the man and the wisdom that comes from him. There is a higher force at work in his life. Wisdom. I listened to Pat Robinson years ago and I cried and I vowed that that would be my prayer. 
He said when he was young and about to start ministry, he prayed three prayer points. He said, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me favor and give me your anointing. I said, that's right. The Bible says, follow them who through faith. And I began to pray. I said, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me favor. And God gave Solomon wisdom. And with that wisdom, he became a wonder. And the queen of Sheba came and said, I've not even seen half of what was told me. See, let me tell you, the world is about to be amazed at the dimension of wisdom that obedient believers will walk in. Wisdom. Proverbs 4 from verse 5 to 9. Kapala Kataya. I know it when the, the, the word is entering somebody's spirit. I tell you, I know it when the word is entering. The, there are some, not everybody, not everybody. I know there are some of you just looking. It's a nice service. But there are some people that say, Lord, this is it. I've been praying, this is it tonight. I lay hold on to sound wisdom. And I change my destiny forever. Proverbs 4 from verse 5. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not and she shall preserve thee. Love her and she will keep thee. Seven, read it together. One to read. This is the wisest man that ever lived speaking. He said wisdom. I've tested this as a king. I've tested it in my life. And this is my verdict. Wisdom is the principal thing. He said therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Listen to the blessings. Eight. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Wisdom will bring you to honor. If you value wisdom, it will bring you to honor. I'm telling you, money cannot give you honor. Money cannot give you honor. Honor is bigger than the realm of money. It's wisdom that brings men to honor. When thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thy head an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee. Wisdom. When you are faithful in tithing, you are faithful in giving. God begins to give you wisdom. Creative wisdom. Creative wisdom. He said, by me kings reign. This ministry today by the grace of God is carried out not by experience. How old are we? It's called wisdom. It's not Sophia. It's not the wisdom of the world. It's a higher level and order of wisdom. Do you believe this tonight? Number three divine ideas divine ideas divine ideas divine ideas god showed me a mystery that opened my eyes divine ideas insight innovation job 32 verse 8 he said but there is a spirit that resides in a man and the inspiration when the holy ghost inspires you he will make you of understanding. Isaiah 45 from verse 1 and 3. He says, and I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. 48 verse 17 says, I am the Lord thy God who teacheth thy hands to profit. Divine ideas. Listen to what the Lord told me. He said, bring ye all the tithes. Please listen. He says, and prove me now here with, if I will not open what? The windows of heaven. And I began to use Google to search all the verses that have to do with the windows of heaven. And I got a shocking revelation. Because I found out that in Genesis 26 or Genesis 7, Verse 11 and 12, the Bible says, in the days of Noah, it says, and God opened the windows of heaven, and what came out was rain. 
he says and i will open the windows of heaven and shower upon you a blessing but he said that blessing will come and there will be no room enough for it what a mystery a blessing no room to contain that blessing that means that blessing is not money it's not materials hallelujah ideas then i listened to oral roberts and he said it's called ideas concepts insights innovation every time god is ready to bless his people there is a sudden release of the inspiration of the holy ghost the race is not to the sweep the battle is not to the strong insight are you listening to me men have changed their lives insights we are looking up to abraham the bible makes us to understand that when abraham left he didn't have much but god gave him insight in jewish days most agriculturists were nomads all right they moved from one place to the other suddenly god gave abraham insight and what happened instead of roaming around with his cattle he dug a well so that the cattle had a stable place insight ideas the bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water every other plant receives rain from above but there is a level of understanding that takes you to the stream so you don't depend on the rain above inside inside in genesis 26 verse 17 to 22 the story of isaac because the Bible speaking about Abraham said that God knew that Abraham would teach his sons to walk in the ways of the Lord. So I believe Isaac was a tither. And he enjoyed some of these blessings. The Bible says he also dug wells. Just like his father. And he increased in cattle. He increased in everything. And when there was a time of famine in Genesis 26, other people were running away. But Isaac sowed in that same land. And received that same year an hundredfold. The Bible says, and God prospered him. The man walked strong. He moved forward. And the Philistines envied him. Hallelujah. Insight. So the rain talks about the Holy Spirit. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Then the wilderness will be turned into a fruitful vine. And the fruitful vine be turned into... A forest hallelujah inside Jacob and Laban in Genesis 30 verse 25 to 43 Genesis 30 verse 25 to 43 the Bible talks about Jacob and Laban after working for 14 good years for two wives the Bible says Laban had walked Jacob out he was taking care of Laban's cattle and because the favor of the Lord was with him his cattle increased and when he was about to go what happened laban said come by experience i have known that god has blessed me for thy sake by experience i've seen it in my cattle that god has blessed me for thy sake he said remain with me and he said here's the deal all of the goats and the sheep that are spotted they are for me they were very few the ones that are not spotted they are for you suddenly divine insight came upon him and the bible says by the riverside i'm still studying that technology till tomorrow how he took polar trees and kept them and then the animals came and they were mating looking at the polar trees and all the children that they gave birth to had spots can you imagine that level of insight suddenly laban found out that his animals were not giving birth to white sheep and goat again they were all spotted. Say after me, divine insight. Hmm. Uzziah in the Bible, Second Chronicles 26, verse 5 to 15, was an amazing king. The Bible says he walked in the way of Zacharias. And as long as he sought God, God prospered him. And then the Bible says insight came to him. The Bible says he built towers in the valleys. He built towers above. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he built engines. He built machines. He stationed his army in a certain pattern that nobody could break through. When you read about Uzziah, you will see that he was a giver in the house of God. He was a tither. 
so when you give you receive divine inspiration hallelujah one great man i respect so much peter j daniels he's worth above five billion u.s dollars never went to school never saw a wall of a university hallelujah he just got up all he had was the bible at age 26 he was a complete failure but today he's a blessing to the world all over because he found these truths in god's word and applied them he's a minister and he has changed the face of humanity because an idea came upon him our fathers have told us of how certain insights and ideas came to them and changed their story forever i pray that as you are faithful in tithing and giving i pray i pray that the god of all flesh who can pick a man irrespective of his lineage and distinguish him i pray that the god of all grace will show you something will show you something that your eyes will see that generations will bless you forever i pray in the name that is above all names that god that while men are looking you will see while men are looking you will see hallelujah and he told lot he said look at the field anywhere you want and all lot was looking but he could not see green pastures all he saw was sodom and he seemed to have picked the choicest land immediately he saw that it turned the bible says god told abraham now lift up your eyes and see he didn't say look and see when god tells you to see you will see things that no man saw when he was about to kill isaac there was no ram all the while that ram had been there but his eyes could not see the bible says suddenly he said look this is a ram hallelujah he said two men were going to emmaus and they could not see jesus was with them but they could not see in between the lines they were walking with him but they did not see the bible says and when he broke bread their eyes were opened may god open your eyes i prophesy may god open your eyes let my god open your eyes i pray that as you sleep in the night by visions by dreams i pray that the lord will show you something in the name of the lord jesus i read about a man who kept diligently tithing and and giving nothing was working in his life one night he slept and he just saw an equation and he saw a drawing and he happened to be very good in drawing he got up and he just drew it and in the dream they told him they said that is a solution that will be relevant in optics he went to a popular hospital he said please he wants to see the consultants and he met them he said i saw this in my dream and i want you to go through it true life story the consultant looked at it and he was shocked he said where did you see this he said in my dream what does it mean please he called other consultants and they came together and they looked at it they had a meeting and they called the man they said you don't know what you have discovered we have done everything we know to do instantly they gave him a check of 20 million us dollars he was interviewed in, in in supernatural the race is not to the sweep there are keys you don't have them you don't have them period and full stop divine insight i pray all the time i say lord grant me insight i don't want to live a foolish life i don't want to struggle for nothing open my eyes oh god and show me where you hid these treasures kenneth copeland six years six years before his breakthrough one of the wealthiest ministers of the gospel hallelujah he sat down was suffering could not bless his generation and he found this truth with his wife was in debt of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and he began to take this word seriously suddenly the lord led him to buy a large plot of land and they found out that there was an oil well under it i, I pray i pray i pray brothers and sisters i pray for you some of you would think you are so young but i pray for you i pray for you i pray for you people have changed history out of the depth of revelation I pray that your eyes will see something. I pray that your eyes will see something. 
innovation. People will mock you now. Hold on. The end of all contention is results. For you cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. Insight. Insight. God will lead you. God will lead you. He will show you things. Hallelujah. I was told about someone in Kaduna. He was walking and praying and asking God to change his story. Suddenly he looked and he saw a vast plot of land somewhere. And the Lord told him to write a proposal and take it, I think, to Coca-Cola or so. And that guy just got up and went to Coca-Cola. He went and met the owner of the land. He said, will you sell this land if we we'll buy it? They say, you're a small boy, get out of here. He said, no, will you sell it? He said, well, if we, we give us a good price. And he went and met Coca-Cola with a proposal. He said, we notice your trucks don't have a place for parking. I've gotten a nice place that I think you would like to look at. Say after me, inside. And suddenly they saw it and they said, okay, we'd like to get the place. And he went and met the people. He said, I found somebody. And I just stand as a middleman and he changed his life forever. People's stories are changing every day. Those who are practicing the word. See, prosperity gives you focus to serve God. Prosperity gives you focus. One of the blessings of prosperity is the ability to focus. You don't want to get up and have children and be running. You will never serve God and leave your destiny. See, this chase after money, money, money. You will never be able to serve God if all you are doing all through your life is chasing after money. Is that correct? But that's what that's the deceit Satan has put on many people. Day and night, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, what are you doing? We are trying to make ends meet. Why don't you stay with the word? It's better to suffer now. It's better to suffer now. Are you hearing me? It's better to suffer now. You are not married, some of you. You don't have children. It's better to pay the price now. Men will laugh at you. They will mock you. But you just hold on. When the word begins to speak, not even you can stop it. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. Matthew 17 verse 27. There was need to pay tax to Caesar. And they came and they were harassing the apostles. They were with Jesus. Suddenly, Jesus had a divine innovation. And he told Peter, he said, Peter, go to the sea. Go and catch a fish. Open the mouth of that fish and remove a coin. I pray that God will lead somebody. God will tell you, go somewhere. Catch a fish. There is gold in the mouth of that fish. You have been seeing an ordinary fish. But let the Lord open your eyes. He looked at the wife of the sons of the prophet. He said, you have a little cruise of oil in your house. You call it nothing. But let the Lord open your eyes. For that oil can multiply. And it can feed you and your generations forever. Irrefutable laws. They will work for anybody. God is no respecter of persons. He may come with a momentary sacrifice. But let me tell you, stand to it. This is another balance of the prosperity gospel. They just tell you, if you are doing it, it must happen now. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's not the time to give up. Stand strong and see the word of the Lord in your life. Hallelujah. Finally, the channels, the works of your hands. The works of your hands. Job chapter 1 verse 9 and 10. The Bible says that when the sons of God came together, Job was with them. And what happened? Job began to, Satan began to speak about Job. And the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? This was Satan testifying. See, let me tell you something. I read a book by Papa Akpami and he said some battles. The name of the book is Battles Satan Cannot Win. When I read that book, it changed my life. It was a gift that he gave me. The only way Satan can stop your harvest is to stop your sowing. Satan does not need to be absent for you to be blessed. All this Satan go away. No, no, no. Let him stay and be a witness. Because he was a witness to Job's prosperity. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And Satan said, Have you not blessed the works of his hands? And or have you not blessed? Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. 
this negates that gospel of laziness lazy a lazy man will never be prosperous say it there are many lazy seed givers tongue talkers but they are lazy the bible says whatever your hands find to do do it many people are lazy the bible says god will bless the works of your hands this is where i teach certain other laws if you follow our message kingdom wealth summit the law of value develop yourself the works of your hands how does god bless the works of your hands in three ways number one he gives you passion passion that's how god bless the work of your hands he gives you passion number two he gives you access to quality information access to quality information hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people perish because of lack of knowledge many people suffer because they lack information quality information that is able to cause you to excel and to lead in whatever area to be the best i told myself i'll be the best in whatever i'm called to do number three he gives you the spirit of excellence that's how god blesses the works of your hands so i'm demystifying it so that you don't just think some ghost comes from somewhere and see. no no there are three ways we are not in a business class so this is just ministry there's no point going into in depth to expound it but god blesses the works of your hands in three ways number one he gives you passion anything you are not passionate about you will not prosper in a period and full stop the best in everything are those who are passionate there hallelujah number two he gives you access to information there are many of us that what you need is information every time i am aware of i know that if i can get more information that i have now i'll not be where i am therefore i'm consistently opening up my spirit for information many of you don't read books you see that this is where the place of diligence comes leadership the word leadership is from the word lead leadership is not a position leadership is influence that is gotten by commanding results hallelujah Many of us are not diligent. You don't read any books on finance. You don't read any book on biblical prosperity. You say it doesn't matter. Let me tell you something. That God, well, we are still talking about other gospels. But that gospel that tells you just sit down and serve God. One day God will see your diligence and bless you. Let me assure you, you will never prosper that way. Because my father and mother are passionate people about God. My mother was a pastor's daughter. I know my, I, I pray sometimes for half of the passion my mother has for God. It didn't change my family's financial story. Are you listening to me? Many of your parents are pastors in ministry. They have been in ministry for decades. They have given everything they have, but they are still suffering. That tells you there is a law you must find out. Don't ever think your spirituality will cover up for lack of understanding of god's word if you have been hoping that one day god will see my faithfulness and change my story let me tell you before time you are in for a root shock there is something called the justice of god his ability to bless those who are disciplined and diligent enough to work with his principles hallelujah round up the works of your hands these are the channels four ways how did god teach me this he says and from the east of eden came out one river and it parted itself into four one river out of eden parted itself into four and in one of the rivers there was gold and he said the gold is very good i'll never be poor in my life never my generation will call me blessed the blessings upon my life will bring a harvest of many to the kingdom nations will be transformed this i believe prosperity is being a blessing it's not about gathering cars gathering houses that's a lopsided definition of prosperity prosperity is not what you have is measured by how much you have given to bless mankind 
a prosperous man i do not envy you i don't care how much you have i want to know how many people have been blessed that's the measure of true biblical prosperity that's why there are many people i don't envy their wealth till i die they don't bless anybody with their prosperity they sit down and all they want is just to flaunt themselves and say oh i have cars i have houses that that's sorrow there if i never drive a car in my life hallelujah and you become blessed i'm a prosperous person that's the biblical definition of prosperity not about how many cars how many this i'm telling you this get that correct definition right now because there is there are wrong prosperity teachings out there and everybody is my car my house my this my that my all testimonies is just i i look forward to times when somebody will come and say ah i capro ministry said they had a need of 15 million naira and the spirit of god spoke to me and i signed it because of that they have sent missionaries to congo they have sent missionaries that's the kind of testimony who stand up and clap don't come and tell us i stood and i just built a nice house uh -huh. and how is the world blessed by that story prosperity i pray every time and i say lord bless me already in my journals I've, I've i've written a comprehensive list of evangelical ministries that will send children that will go to school because we are blessed families that will be changed we're talking about building estates and giving it to people we're talking about rescuing nations not yourself and your wife and your children if you don't believe this God will search your heart and say, this is biblical prosperity. I believe it. I know that if I refuse to pay the price today, a nation will suffer. I will never stand my child looking at me in the face and say, Daddy, why did you not believe God when others were believing? Many of you have had to look at your parents and they say, this guy was my classmate. You say, really? What happened? You didn't believe what he was believing. I will let God be proud of me. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you. My best Lord is everything I have. My best Lord, I give all I have to you my best lord for your glory is everything i have my best lord i give all i have to you hallelujah there are other benefits that are not financial that come in when you obey god's word divine health protection longevity longevity psalms 41 verse 1 to 3 we're out of time but i want you to pay the price this night and and listen let me finish this series this could be the best gift you have had this year psalms 41 verse 1 to 3 blessed is he that considereth the poor the lord will deliver him in time of trouble the lord will preserve him and keep him alive and he shall be blessed upon the earth and thou shalt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies look at this powerful scripture verse 3 the lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing thou will make all his bed in sickness i the lord will be merciful unto him heal my soul for for i've sinned against you okay so that you just read that to verse 3 and then you stop there number 2 psalm 20 verse 1 to 3 psalm 20 verse 1 to 3 powerful prayer this has become my prayer see many of you lack the keys that you need see on the strength of revelation you can write gloriously in life 20 the lord hear thee in the day of trouble the name of the god of jacob defend thee send thee help from his sanctuary and strengthen thee out of zion remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice the Lord hear thee. Send thee help from his sanctuary. 
many of you will need to go to your loved ones and go and give and go and give them some of these scriptures job 22 job 22 let's finish up we'll soon round up job 22 thank you jesus verse 23 i'll read it whether or not you are there verse 23 I'm going to show you one powerful mystery that I found. I shouted when I found it. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up, and thou shalt put away iniquity very far from thy tent. He said, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. He said, Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Listen, and then thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty, and thou shalt lift up thy face unto God. He said, Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee, and thou shalt pay thy vows. 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and thy light shall shine upon thy ways. Listen, 29. When men say there is a casting down, then thou shalt say there is a lifting up, and it shall save the humble person. Listen, listen, look at verse 30. Dangerous scripture. Does anybody have any other version aside from King James? Please, anybody, quickly. Verse 30. Is there anybody there? Listen, he said what? Even sinners will be rescued. dangerous mystery that on account of your practicing the word you can shield people who are not even believers he said even sinners so my loved ones who are not obeying the word of god i can stand and there is a key in the spirit i can ignite and stand and speak he said even sinners will be rescued when you find it he said your heart will be glad when you find it he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom that's the prayer i pray for for this house every time i say lord there are some people here who are not born again there are some people here who are not faithful in titan but by this scripture oh god i pray that you cover for them until the revelation hits them that's why you see some people who are not faithful in the word of god but they are still getting blessed talk about intercession with knowledge isaiah 65 20 to 24 Isaiah 65, 20 to 24. Ah, my spirit is boiling. If only one person can catch this thing this night, I'm happy. Don't just be emotional about it. Don't just be emotional. Many of you are hearing what some families are praying about and saying, Lord, change our story. It's not an impartation. It's light. Many people are saying, oh God, we want to start a new business. That's not the issue. Hmm. Verse 20. There shall be no more in it infant of days. These are the blessings for tithing and giving. Nor an old man that has not filled his days. For the child shall die a hundred years old. But the sinner, being a hundred years old, shall be accursed. Listen, 21. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat of the fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of the tree, they are the days of my people. And my elect will long enjoy the works of their hands. 23. Thou shalt not labor in vain, nor bring forth for trouble. He said, for they are the seed of the blessed and their offspring with them. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. You cannot do anything against the truth, but for the truth. Hallelujah. Divine health, protection, longevity. These are blessings that follow people who are faithful. Are you seeing that prosperity is not just about money? Look at what a lot of people have been missing. So, every time you hear people make certain audacious statements, there is a revelation they are standing upon. You will only criticize if you don't know what they know. Knowledge intoxicates. Finally, I want to round up with something. Just two minutes and I'll be done. 
I have to address this issue. We are talking about um, the gospel of prosperity. Hallelujah. The concept of giving to your man of God or what we know as prophet's offering. I need to put, I need to teach on this on the next one minute and put a balance quickly. What is the concept of prophet's offering? And the concept of giving to over the man of God. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 4 from verse 8 to 17. 2 Kings. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Kings 4. Oh, I wish we had so much time. Second Kings 4 from verse 8. Hallelujah. The Bible says there was a woman, she was a Shunammite woman. Hallelujah. And that every time Elijah passed to Shunem, please listen, that the woman saw him. She was a great woman. The Bible says she constrained him to eat bread. And every time he passed, she called him. Elijah, Elisha was a man of God. Every time he passed, the woman saw him. She said, I perceive that this is a man of God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says she built a place for him. First, she was giving him bread. And then she built a place for him. Listen, please, carefully. When she built a place for him, she put candles, something for him to write. Prophets were writers or men of God of those days. It applies now to everybody. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that it came to pass when this woman was doing all of the things that he was doing the bible says verse 12 and he said to gehazi his servant call this shunammite that means the man had been touched by her generosity first she perceived that he was a man of god can i tell you something okay well i'll i'll, I'll say that a little later he said and she stood before him listen 13 and he said unto her say now unto her behold thou hast shown care for us with all this care what is it that will be done for thee he said would thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host and she answered i dwell among my own people look up every true servant of god does not depend on the finance of his congregation this guy was an influential man. He said, should we talk to the government for you? Are you listening to me? Elisha was not a poor man. Every man of God that depends on his members for his welfare. God sent me to be a blessing, not to be a burden. Many men of God have put their, 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 their members in, in all kinds of burden and yoke as if they are the ones who called him. Go and meet the person who called you into ministry. He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? Hallelujah. However, the Bible says the woman did what? She gave him bread and she built a place for him. As a result, what happened? To summarize the story, he found out, he looked at her life and found out that there was something she, could not, she did not have. And he said, according to the time of life. Are you listening to me? In 2 Kings 17 verse 9, First Kings 17, verse 9 to 16, the story of the widow in Zarephath. When the brook cherry had dried, God sent Elijah. Interestingly, God said, Dear, I have commanded a widow to feed thee. But we do not see any record of the woman being aware that Elijah was coming. But God said, I have commanded her. Look at, look at a very wicked prophet for heaven's sake. When he just got there, look at what Elijah said. I mean, when, uh, Elijah, sorry. When he went there, he said, Madam, please bring me water. As if he was, he was not aware that there was famine. Are you listening to me? He said, bring me water. And as the woman said, okay. He said, as you are coming, please add bread and oil. The woman said, Habba. Sorry, sir. I know you are a man of God, but are you blind? I'm about to eat the last one and die. He said, just go and bring it first. I want to prophesy. Go and bring it. And he says, as surely as the Lord lives, that flower will not run dry. The Bible says, and they ate from it many days. Can I tell you something? Listen. When you give to a, the, a man of God that God has placed over you, you are not trying to help him financially. Your giving is not donation. 
many people are you seeing the balance now because there are many believers who like it they say hey we thank god koinonia we don't give nobody puts any pressure you are going to be poor there is a blessing listen listen when god places men of god over your life their function is four i must teach you this tonight number one to open your eyes to the revelation of the word number two to supply spiritual guidance and direction number three to correct and instruct you in the way of the lord the bible says to correct you in righteousness number four to speak over your life hallelujah when god puts a man of god over your life who is effective are you listening to me one way that you step into cheap blessing is to learn to sow into their life now you know by God's grace that we are blessed. So don't you think I'm trying to manipulate you to get your money? No. If I depend on koinonia for my well-being, it means I will die. Because I have to tie myself to the obedience of all of you. What if God tells you, Aaron, to bless me? And you have to think about it for one, for one month. I'll be suffering for one month till you finally tell God, yes. Every man of God is blessed by his own giving life. Not the members. It is my giving and adherence to God's principle that blesses me many of you have been robbed of the opportunity are you listening to me i will teach you this because it's truth many of you do not care about the ministers many of you don't care about us when i say care i'm not talking about giving oh we, we have we have learned to see the faithfulness of god but i'm saying that you are robbing yourself i tell you sincerely under god if you give to me you don't make me richer You create a platform for yourself to rise. Not because my name is Joshua Selman, but because of the office that I occupy by grace. And the prophet looked. And the Bible says, he told her, he said, according to the time of life, this one that you do not have. The Lord led Bishop Oyedeko and he met Kenneth Copeland and gave him a seed and he spoke over his life and changed his story forever. Many of you do not value the balance is no man of God. And as surely as the Lord lives till Jesus come, you will never hear of a time in E and I by the grace of God Almighty where we we'll have to stand up and say, oh yeah, eh, um, um, please, if you, don't give, if you don't give to me, I will die. Oh, let God be true and let all men be liars. A God is more than enough. Are you listening to me? Could it be that there are... See, let me tell you something. Friends, I need to tell you something. The first thing the Shunammite woman saw is that she perceived that he was a man of God. See, the man that God has sent over your life, are you listening to me? Whether he's younger than you or older than you, when it comes to his office, he's not your friend. Are you listening to me? Many of you do not know the difference. The woman first, Mike Mudok defines wisdom as the ability to recognize difference. She perceived that he was a man of God. I've met ministers younger than me. I've met ministers less experienced than I am. But when I perceive that there is grace for that time period, I take away every informality and i know that there is grace that they carry the reason why many of you have never been blessed is you don't know the difference between i'm not i'm not teaching all this manipulation and servitude but i will not deceive you many of you the day you begin to see the difference something will change in your life hallelujah i'm not talking of man of men of god that ah let me do this please climb upon my head and move that's witchcraft hallelujah but that any time you are in a place god sends men who are teaching you and building you in the way of righteousness you tap by see i tell you many of you are robbing yourself of glorious opportunities there are some of you who don't even know our birthdays I'm not asking you to go and buy a jet for me or do this. Many of you don't know. And you are laughing. Let me tell you the truth. It's, it's lack of wisdom. You won't get blessed that way. 
Many of you are here. You see people who are laboring day and night. You don't even care. You just look at them. Our birthdays come and pass. There are some of you who don't even know. All you know is our phone number when you have trouble. Ah! God, you said we should call you. You won't get blessed that way. Jakes! Jakes! Oh, they are pursuing me. You see, but let me tell you something. There, there are ways. If you honor the anointing that God has put, many, this is a key. I won't deceive you. I'm not looking for blessings from you. But I must teach you because it's the truth. Hallelujah. Many of you do not ever see the need. That's why many of you like Koinonia. Because you ran away from your churches. You felt they are killing us in this church. I like Koinonia. You don't give money. Just come and sit down and go. But let me tell you something. If we don't give you the balance and provoke you, you will remain poor. And if you remain poor, we are not successful. You will be frustrated. You will be angry. Hallelujah. There are men and women of God in my life that I honor consistently till death. Consistently, without fail, no matter what happens. I'd rather not have food to eat because I understand the place, their place in my life and the benefits and the blessings and I've enjoyed the things that they carry and I've tapped into certain graces and wisdom. Hallelujah. We have just one prayer point tonight. You're going to pray for what I call the giving grace. This prayer will break greed from the life of somebody forever and prepare you on a pedestrian. Hallelujah. And we'll not end this meeting. I want to give you an opportunity. Everybody package an offering. I can't teach on prosperity without you raising this. I don't, I'm, please package. If you don't have help your neighbor, it's not about money. I want you to connect into spiritual principles. I beg you, if you have and your neighbor does not have, help him. If you don't have, make contact with somebody. This is not about money. Bring out a sacrificial seed. We are going to pray. I prayed and I cried this afternoon like a baby. I said, Lord, Jesus said, all the people you have given me, none has been lost except the son of perdition that the scripture may be fulfilled. Bring out an offering. Some of you will need to make some sacrifices that will help you. Balance view. I made sacrifices that changed my life. I'm still making sacrifices that will change my life forever. I am happy about the word of God and the laws of God. Please rise up on your feet. We're out of time. Outside, rise up on your feet. The Lord is in this place. We're out of time. I want you to pray for one minute. I spoke of obedience. I spoke of tithing. You will never be able to tithe consistently until there is grace for you. You can, see, let me tell you, it's humanly impossible to give, especially when you are in need. But in the house of God, giving for the work of the kingdom, giving, you will change your life and story. For you cannot do anything against the truth. Friends, if you have been looking for the key out of poverty into a life of prosperity, this is it I gave you tonight. Lift your voice and say, Lord, the giving grace. Make sure you are praying. Open your mouth and pray. Break your pride tonight and pray. Say, Lord, help me. Kapatala you have taught me your ways oh God giving grace giving grace giving grace grace to be faithful in tithing grace to be faithful in tithing say Lord I make a vow no matter what it will cost me I become an ardent tither God cannot be mocked. Forget about the temporary sufferings. Forget about the temporary inconveniences. Except there is no day and night. God can be trusted.
grace to be a tighter grace to be a giver say lord i break greed from my life i break the chains of greed i break the chains of selfishness i break the chains of selfishness forever oh god i stop thinking about myself i think about how many will be blessed from my life i think about the welfare of others above myself how i can be a blessing a channel of blessing to others to your house pray say lord i'm delivered tonight from that self-centered spirit i me and myself i break free from that self-centered spirit i move from the realm of welfare and survival into the realm of true prosperity lord that many will say they are blessed that many will say they went to school because of me many families will say their stories were changed because of me my pride is not just in my well-being alone my pride is in the testimony of changed lives lift your voice and pray the grace to give an ardent giver the grace to give I rebuke greed I rebuke self-centeredness pray for grace to obey the giving grace grace to obey grace to obey finally pray say lord help me to recognize favor when it comes help me to recognize wisdom give me divine ideas insights innovation bless the works of my hands with passion give me the relevant information bless me oh god with the spirit of excellence the spirit of excellence go ahead and pray say lord let me be that savior that will come out of my lineage that savior out of my family that savior i pay the price pray for grace to pay the price it will cost you let me tell you the truth it will cost you it will cost you mockery it will cost you envy it will cost you temporal inconvenience but if the clouds be full of rain as surely as the god of israel lives as surely as the god of israel lives you will command fearful results pray grace in the name of jesus hallelujah lift up the seed that you have held please if you don't have any seed hold somebody connect please lift your hands everybody i want to pray for you i prayed a prayer and i told god i cried my life out this afternoon i said lord change the story of people make them believe this word and not just be emotional about it has no respect for age has no respect for geography i don't care what level you are in i tell you if you practice this consistently you will rise to the top and the nations will see you god cannot lie lift your hands father these seeds are a representation of kingdom-minded citizens who understand the correct blueprint for your prosperity package my god and my king there are families here that are struggling my god and my king there are people who have inherited all kinds of financial causes lord there are families here that are divorced and is on account of finances lord there are many people here who have been crying and saying lord where is the key my god i pray I give your seed a voice in the name of Jesus. 
I command it to speak in the spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that God had respect for the offerings of Abel. I pray that this seed you are lifting. For some of you, you are not lifting it out of your convenience. But I pray that for the rest of your life, you will make reference to this night. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray the giving grace. Many of you want to do it, but there is no grace. The giving grace. The tithing grace. I release it upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that that spirit of greed, self-centeredness, let it be broken from your life forever. That your pride will be the testimony of others who have been blessed on account of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that as you begin to practice these kingdom principles, my God and my King, let favor come upon your people. Let wisdom come upon your people. Give them divine ideas, divine insight, concepts, innovations. In the name of Jesus. And I pray that God will bless the works of your hands. That God will bless the works of your hands with passion. God will grant you access to the relevant information you need. And that God will grant you the spirit of excellence. To lead in whatever field of endeavor. For those who are students, may God cause you to lead. Extraordinary performance. By the spirit of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Cast your offering quickly. I'm just praying for so one minute. Quickly. For if you turn aside in the day of battle, my Bible tells me your strength is small. There are many believers who are just sugar-coated Christians, result-oriented Christians, and we are unable to stand the test of time. Are you, are you listening to something tonight? If this is all we do tonight, is what the miracle service. Hallelujah. So don't be under pressure. Many people are under pressure to prove that the word of God is working. You have money, you want to go and buy suit, God will say, sow it. Just sow it. You want to go and eat food, God will say, buy a Dick's Bible. And you are sowing in fastings, in prayers. Nobody sees you, but he who sees you in the secret, I tell you, as surely as the heavens are above the earth, will reward you openly. When we were on campus, we had a, all kinds of pastors. All kinds of people. And there were people who believed they had entered their rest. With PAs and all kinds of things. We were behind, behind trees, behind buildings, traveling in the spirit and learning the precepts of God. We will do terrible things in righteousness and come back and just remain. I remember how many times a number of pastors came and met me and said, Adel, some Jews are not working in your level of anointing. Do something. Start a radio program, a prophetic or this and that. To the point that PFN, when we went for crusade, PFN said they are affording us an auditorium to come and start a branch of our ministry. This was as far back as 2006. And would have been happy to call it breakthrough. But we understand that certain limitations are not just from Satan. They are prophetic orchestrations to keep us exactly into our seasons. All the days of my appointed time. I will wait. Oh, I will wait. Until my change comes. And then God begins to bless you. And people say, and when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. He said, then our mouths were filled with laughter. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things to them. He said, turn again our captivity as it were the rivers of Negev. He said, he that sows in tears will reap in joy. Listen to me. Don't be ashamed to sow in tears. For as surely as the Lord, the God of heaven lives, you will reap in joy. I'm not just talking of money. Are you listening to me? You think God has called you? Now it's not the time to start printing posters and running around. Now is the time to get up and begin to buy books, sit down in fastings, in prayers, in much traveling until you become mighty in scripture 
and full of the Holy Ghost then at your time of appointment God will speak this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and he will command the world to hear you nobody will not be able to hear you hmm. I have to rush what do you need to be in place to experience breakthrough remember we said breakthrough is the breaking of limitations number one you must surrender totally to jesus notice i didn't say you must i'm not just talking of born again hallelujah because there are many people who jesus has become savior to but he is not yet lord total surrender acts chapter 4 verse 12 but there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must receive soteria healing salvation deliverance breakthrough no other name not the name of any pastor any apostle any prophet they are only vessels but there is a name the name of the lord jesus christ and tonight we come in that name to challenge the works of darkness the bible says for this purpose was the son of man made manifest that he may destroy annihilate liquidate the works of the evil one hallelujah surrender totally matthew chapter 11 verse 28 I'm taking our time to show us these scriptures because I want us to be grounded and to receive the things that God has for us. Matthew 11 verse 28 Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I tell you there are many people who are struggling with things in their lives and the solution is to live your way of life and come to Jesus Christ. This is not just luring you to be a Christian. Jesus said, I am the way, I am reality, and I am the life. So tonight, I believe that God is speaking to some people here. Inside and outside, you came here with burdens and sorrows. You have tried and you've, you've done everything to, you know to do. The Lord is asking you tonight, why don't you lay your burden? Why don't you come to his feet and lay your burden and say, Lord, enough is enough. There are families that are receiving all kinds of burdens they are not supposed to be carrying. Surrender totally to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. See, because you cannot bless a man who the word of God is against. Are you listening to me? You are not born again. The word of God is already against you. Because the Bible says he who does not believe in him is already condemned. hallelujah you don't believe the word of god and you're saying all this i want to receive from god but me i don't want to become a child of god no it doesn't work that way hallelujah number two you must go for knowledge and understanding of the kingdom living through god's word i didn't say knowledge and understanding just of scriptures you must have the knowledge and the understanding of the kingdom life how god designed for us to live in the kingdom to live the victorious life john chapter 11 verse 9 and 10. john chapter 11 thank you jesus the lord shows me the angels of the lord in this place I prayed specifically I listened to prophet Bob Jones a great prophet of God and he said a day came he was caught up in the spirit and he met an angel and the name of that angel is breakthrough and the angel told him that he was the one who walked with Archbishop Ben Idahosa he didn't know Idahosa from anywhere he told him there was a Nigerian called Archbishop Ben Idahosa God sent him to be the one to walk I said Lord would you send these angels of breakthrough tonight because you gave me a word and the lord told me he will do it and so i believe that the, the I've, I've never really had encounters with breakthrough angels i've had encounters with angels but not breakthrough angels but i know that these visions that the lord keeps playing again and again is a sign that the waters are about to stay be stirred. blessed is she that believes for unto her there shall be a performance 
Let's finish up. John 11 verse 9 and 10. Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in night, in the night, he stumbled because there is no light in him. He didn't say because his eyes is not seen. There is no light in him. He said the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple. It's time to go for knowledge. Revelation knowledge, not just religion and tradition. Contend for it. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Knowledge is not a gift. It's acquired. You go for knowledge. John 8 32. I must show you these scriptures before we rise up. Because God will do great things tonight in this place. And ye shall know the truth. John 8 32. And the truth shall do what? It didn't say, and a man of God shall make you free. He didn't say, and a miracle service shall make you free. Are you listening to me? And ye shall know the truth. And the truth that you know is capable of making you. It didn't say set you free. It may not happen in one day. Make you free. There is a making that is unto freedom. And ye shall know the truth. And the activity of that truth in your spirit will bring you to a realm of freedom. And ye shall know the truth. Go for knowledge. Value knowledge. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 15. Ecclesiastes chapter 10. The presence of God. There is a switch in anointings in this place. Thank you. Ah, Elohim, Elohim, Madonna. Ah, Elohim. The labor of the fool wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city. He said, The labor of the fool wearied him, not because there is no city. He does not know how to go to the city so you must find out how to go to the city the labor of the fool weary at him because he does not know how to go to the city may the lord show us the way to the city in the name of the lord jesus number three obedience to god's principles the keys that will bring breakthrough number one is total surrender to jesus Number two is knowledge and understanding of the kingdom life. Through the word of God. Three, obedience to God's principles. And I wrote here, at all cost. Because many of us only obey according to the convenience it brings. The Bible says Jesus was obedient unto death. Philippians 2 from verse 5, permit this mind to be in you which was so also in christ jesus who although being in equality with god did not consider it robbery but he humbled himself and became obedient unto death and he died even the death on the cross wherefore god so highly exalted him and given him an identity a reputation an office a name that is above every other name that are the mention that whenever you invoke and place a demand upon that office of the Christ every knee will bow of things in heaven of things in the earth and tonight some knees will bow in your life oh some knees will bow hallelujah obedience Isaiah 1 verse 19 popular scripture Although many of you don't know it because you don't care about it. If ye be willing, it starts by saying, If, if it's up to you, if ye be willing and obedient, what will happen? Ye shall eat the good of the land. Can I tell you, every land has good, 
is not just in Abuja and Lagos. When the devil wants to kill some people, he gives them visa to London, America, China. Because they believe there are people sleeping under the bridge in America. There are Nigerians sweeping the road and sleeping under the bridge in UK. There are, I was reading a, a newspaper about a path that people follow to go to London through Lagos. They follow through deserts and die on the way. Ask them what they are looking for. They say greener pastures. But my Bible tells me, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He, the Lord, makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Satan does not need to be absent before you get blessed. He said, You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass in that day if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and to do all his commands which I command you this day that the Lord will set you on high above all nations verse 2 and these blessings shall come upon you and will overtake you if you will obey the blessings of obedience are priceless these blessings will come upon you and they will overtake you. Say, I receive grace to be obedient. At all costs, I receive grace. Obedience in walking in the principles of God, obedience in tithing, obedience in giving, obedience in declaring God's word, obedience in standing firm, haven't done all to stand, stand. Number four. And this is our job tonight. Exercise dominion over Satan and demons. Exercise dominion. Take action. Do something about them. Through the ministry of prayer and the operation of the anointing. Make sure you are writing it the way I'm saying it. Through the ministry. Listen. You don't just exercise authority over Satan just by speaking. Elijah was a man of like passions like us, the Bible says. And the Bible says he went and he prayed that there be no rain for three and a half years. It was on account of that prayer he went and he made a decree. True decree is born out of the place of prayer. You don't just stand and say be healed. Go, be free. I speak to your life. No, sir. The sons of Sceva did not know the secret of Paul. He said, I thank my God. I pray in tongues more than ye all. And they saw the man who was possessed of demons. Because their father was a priest. The Bible does not tell us what kind of priest. And they adjured the demon in the God that Paul preaches. And the demon beats them and strips them off. You exercise dominion in the place of prayer. And through the ministry of the anointing. You dislodge Satan. Mark 1 27. The Bible says while Jesus was teaching like I'm doing. The power of God was present. The power of God. The anointing. The unction for performance. The ability of God that backs his word and makes it potent. As Jesus was teaching. Just like I'm teaching. And miracles are already taking place. Shiftings. Alignments. That close the door. That have been opened for Satan to find access in lives and families. As Jesus taught. Matthew 8 16. After a prayer you speak, you declare. The Bible says he casted the devils with his word. He didn't cast them with his wish. He didn't cast them with his dream. He didn't cast them with his choruses. He casted them with his word. Listen, the Bible did not say he casted them with his speaking. He casted them with his word. It's not your speaking that drives devils. It's the word of God. 
that's why you can just lay hands on a demon even without speaking because you have been so full of the word that you are becoming the word so when you lay hands what heals the person is the word the manifestation of the word the goal of taking in the word is that you become a manifestation of the word yourself not just that you know the word that you become full of the word and then you become an expression of the word such that you can look at a devil and just point at him even without speaking the word is commanding him hallelujah luke 10 verse 17 to 19 we must read this before we rise up to pray don't worry the time we have is more than enough for god to do a quick work it doesn't take long when the word has entered your spirit luke 10 verse 17 after he sent the 70 verse 17 and the 70 returned again with joy saying lord please listen get this once and for all even the demons are what subject to us say the demons are subject to me please shout it say demons are subject to me demons are subject to me you must believe this all kinds of demons do you know at this time the believers the apostles were not even born again i hope you know jesus just sent them in his name and they came back and said wow even the demons this is the basis of casting out devils and liberating people you cannot deliver someone who is above you are you listening to me even the demons are subject to us not because we are called ourselves through thy name the name of the lord is a strong tower and listen verse 18 and he said unto them jesus speaking now i beheld satan fall as what lightning say after me satan is falling oh say it again satan is falling there's a song we used to sing i have seen seen i know many of you did sing it glory be to god glory be to jesus i have seen seen the downfall of satan glory be to god Amen. we didn't have the revelation we we're just singing it but now i know truly that is not a lie like jesus christ i have seen seen the downfall of satan glory be to god glory be to jesus i have seen seen the downfall of satan glory be to god amen hallelujah i believe that song with all my heart right now it's not just the tunes of songs or the the jenna that moves me i'm interested in the revelation my faith is hearing i have seen i have seen i don't just get entertained by songs i have seen he said i beheld satan and i saw him fall the bible says judgment was declared upon him in heaven listen tonight we are not trying to fight satan our job is to stand in the victory and enforce it because although god has put all things under his feet we do not yet all see all things but we see jesus and we come in the name of that jesus and we legislate on behalf of heaven say amen, amen. now listen out of everything i have taught you the first three we cannot do it for you this is the only one that we can do for you tonight we can be born again for you are you listening to me we cannot get knowledge for you we cannot we cannot do what what's the third one we cannot be obedient for you but such as we have tonight oh there is an agency of the spirit we can command the devil we can stand and agree with you I won't begin to poison you with satanic messages oh have faith you left your home and you came here that's enough faith brother many people died in that accident you have faith right here and you will receive it 
are you listening to me you left the road that some people some of you traveled from different places i assure you that's enough faith faith can be seen when jesus saw their faith they were tearing the roof many of you walked from wherever you are to come here tonight that's faith blessed be the name of the lord luke 5 verse 7 jesus walked in the anointing in a very powerful way now please be sensitive because we're going to stand up as soon as we stand up we'll move straight into the business of the night what god would want to do mm. 17 luke 5 17 and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by those who were come out of galilee and judea and jerusalem and the what and the what so there is an operation of the anointing and the power of god jeremiah 30 verse 8 oh do you hear what i hear in the spirit jeremiah 30 verse 8 what the lord will be doing tonight by his spirit for there is no other name for there is no other name Thank you jesus jeremiah 30 verse 8 for it shall come to pass say amen, amen. oh tonight it will come to pass amen. it shall come to pass in that day saith the lord of hosts that i will break his yoke from off thy neck do you believe this and it shall come to pass saith the lord of hosts that i will break his yoke from off thy neck and i will burst thy bonds and strangers aliens demons are aliens they are strangers they are not supposed to live in this realm and the bible says those strangers shall no more oppress you yes that's the word of god he said it shall come to pass the bible gives them a name it calls them aliens they are strangers they are illegal occupants of your body illegal occupants of your finances illegal occupants of your academics of your life he said it shall come to pass those strangers will not enslave you why will all this happen the last scripture isaiah 10 verse 27 that is why this will be possible 10 27 mm. And it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke he didn't say your yoke his yoke satan's yoke because jesus said my yoke is easy and my burden is light it is time for the new anointing guard up your loins and be ready Every yoke of bondage shall be destroyed. I prophesy now is the time for the new anointing. Guard up your loins and be ready for every yoke of bondage. Surely must be broken. I'll sing it one more time now is the time for the new anointing guard up your loins and be ready for every yoke of bondage surely must be broken family bondages whatever it is now is the time there is a new anointing Please gird up your faith and be ready for every yoke of bondage, every yoke of bondage, every yoke of sickness, every yoke of failure, every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. 
Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. This is what he told me. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. It shall come to pass that the burden that undue limitation of marriage listen let me tell you something there are not many the focus of god tonight is not just healings there are some radical breakthroughs that need to step in for some people are you listening to me for your family for yourself this is why i took out time to teach breakthrough he said and then your light shall break forth as the morning Eastern shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us after tonight's meeting. Eastern shores and the islands will see your light as it rises on us. Eastern shores. I like you to believe. Sing it with me. Hey, Mr. Shores and the Islands will see. One more time. Mr. Shores and the Islands will see. point number one lord i surrender totally go ahead and begin to pray they had the word just like we did lord i surrender totally let satan not have any excuse to keep me in poverty to keep me in bondage because as long as you are not surrendered i tell you satan has legal access to your life to your family make sure you are praying pray and say lord i decree please pray for your family lord enough is enough i surrender everything i surrender hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to pray and say lord i receive deliverance from laziness mental laziness to go for knowledge to study the word to take god's word seriously there are many of us that need to pray say lord i have not been taking your word seriously but tonight lift your voice in this miracle service i vow and i make a commitment your word over my finances your word over my health your word over my authority lord i don't just want to receive from you i take your word seriously i believe it i develop passion for your house passion for your word 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 you are not a man that you should lie not the son of man that you should repent i believe i believe i believe i go for knowledge i go for knowledge i buy books i listen to tapes i sit under the anointing for my life to change my mind deliverance of my mind a reprogramming a reprogramming a reprogramming by the power of the word by the agents of the holy ghost a reprogramming of my mind Hallelujah. 
knowledge reprograms your mind it reprograms your mind brings you to a realm where you are not walking in antagonism when you walk in that realm i tell you no matter what satan brings you will emerge victorious your mind has been changed do not be conformed to this world but be it transformed prayer point number three that spirit that works in the sons of disobedience that makes them disobey god's word although you know what the word says difficult in walking in obedience i receive grace to obey lift your voice and pray grace in tithing in giving in praise in worship in love in character satan will not have room in my life grace to obey grace to pray make sure you are praying the bible says pray without season the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you lord i'm an obedient christian obedience unto death no matter what it will cost me no matter what it will cost me the temporary pain the temporary pleasure the temporary tears i saw in tears i obey i saw in tears i obey i saw in tears i obey i obey god is faithful god is faithful god is faithful i meditate on these things i give myself holy to them my profit in appears unto all make sure you're praying Kapata kapala, am praste kapate kete, rakata pakata. Make sure you're not looking at others. You came for a miracle service. Arabara gada bara gada bara rebosh. Do I have some prayer warriors in the house? Do I have some prayer warriors in the house? You people are not praying like victorious people. Do I have some prayer warriors, men of destiny? Those who know their God, who will be strong and do exploits. Ata pakata balaramos, raka pakata base, baka kapali aramos. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now listen. Within the next five minutes, hear me. I want you to pray your life out in this last prayer request are you listening to me the final prayer point you're going to say lord in this place i'm walking out of that problem whether it's a limitation for your family are you listening to me lift your voice and pray come on travel pray like a priest say lord others came for joke but i did not come to joke I came to take my blessing. I came to take breakthrough. I came to take power. Back up, partaker. I came to take energy. You can open a door. You can make a way. I believe you. Yes, you can make a way. My God, you can make a way. You are not a man. You will not lie. You are not a man. You will not lie. Barakete, reketete, repokoto. Pray for your job. Pray for your finance. Pray for your health. That terminal disease. Enough is enough. That terminal disease. That blood disease. Enough is enough. That habit. That habit. That masturbation. That lesbianism. That sexual lifestyle. Enough is enough. That hatred, that bitterness, those nightmares, demons oppressing you. Enough is enough. The devourer over your family. Enough is enough. Pray. Everybody, your family, 
is falling sick. Enough is enough. Stand on the gap. No, 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 no. Like Jacob, I hold on to you tonight. I will not let you go. My God, I count you faithful. I will not let you go until you bless me. Change my name. Change my story. 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 Hallelujah. God, take up fire. Change our name. Change the stories of families. They call your family failures. They say nothing good can come out of you. Lord, change our story. Is it turn again our captivity, oh God? Like the streams of the Negev. They say your family, they don't give birth. In your family, they don't get married. In your family, nobody gets a job. Nobody can build a house that your father cannot build. There is a God. I bring you news tonight. There is a God. His name is Jesus. He has been lifted. You have been submitting CVs again and again. No job. You have prayed. You have fasted. You are a minister. No growth in your church. We are praying, oh. We are praying. We are praying. Lord, change my father's story. Change my mother's story. Change the story of my family. You are God. You have done it in the past. You have done it in the past. You have done it in the past. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you, my spirit is mad right now. Tonight, some things will change. Some things must change this night. Oppression in your dreams. You don't tell anybody you are a Christian, but you can't sleep. You can't sleep. Enough is enough. Terminal disease. You know how many times you escape death. Enough is enough. Come on. You have been writing jam. You are brilliant. But you enter the exam hall. You don't know what is happening. Your CGPA is down. Not because you are dull. You know you are not dull. You know you are not dull. Enough is enough. We are still praying. One more minute. One more minute. Change our story. Let the nations know that our God is alive. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and I will heal their life. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head when I cry. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head. Listen. The Lord wants to set families free right now. This one is not for individuals. But because you represent families many of you may not know the hand of satan in your family but enough is enough there is an anointing please lift your hands oh we mean business tonight oh we mean business tonight as i begin to pray listen the power of god 
will come on certain people know you are representing your family your family whether it's barrenness joblessness my god and my king whose i am right now let the power of god break yokes break yokes break yokes in the name of jesus now 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 break the yokes but take it in. inside and outside i release the power of god bring them out take it receive the fire the fire the fire of the holy ghost i release the fire bring them out bring them out ushers barrenness i cause it everything that speaks against you i cause it tonight Makapate, rekeposa, maparikes, okoproskepa, rekete. Outside, the power of God is touching people. Outside, setting families free. Kata kata bala, patikata. We set the works of darkness on fire over families of our lives the devil is a liar by the fire power of the holy ghost and he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire every kind of cause no divination no enchantment against jacob the power of God is hitting you. I tell you, the power of God is touching families. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. The angels of the Lord moving in the crowd. Moving in the crowd. The angels of the Lord. The angels of the Lord. The angels of the Lord. Of the Lord moving. My father. For your name's sake, my father. Patakata balada baka. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take that cause of barrenness but take it in the enemy has done this hallelujah higher i tell you things are happening in this place there is fire in this place no too hot for any devil and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing i release the anointing the yoke breaking anointing listen to me Listen to me. Hallelujah. Tonight, tonight, God is coming in as a warrior in many families. Are you listening to me? See, God told me families. Families have suffered. Families have suffered. Satan, that devil over these families. Go, 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 go.
go, 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 let God's people go free. Go, go, go. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Breakthrough is when you break that obstacle by the anointing. You shatter walls. That man will know your God is alive. Tonight, don't give excuses. Don't give excuses. Get angry. Say, Lord, you are touching families. You won't pass me this night, oh. You won't pass me this night. Hallelujah. Hold on. I see all kinds of oppression over this lady's family. Satan, come out. Go. In the name of Jesus. Bring this lady. Let her family go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her family go. Go. I set your family free right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Delay in marriage. All kinds of demonic things. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. You will, you will go back and know you came for a miracle service. You have prayed. You have heard the word. God will not fail you. Listen to me. Listen. Now, hear me. I want to pray for people. Listen. You know that you have any challenge over your mind and your brain. You are not dull. You know it. See, tonight, there's no hiding anything. We are a family. Don't sit back there and watch Satan wreck your life. Because I'm seeing someone, listen. Every time you want to read, a severe headache comes upon you. You can't explain until you close that book. For all those that belong in this category, lift your hands. Because some things will end right now. I want to pray. Oh, there are angels. In the name that is above every other name. Many of you will literally feel something being pulled off your head. Literally. At the count of three. That's the instruction the Holy Ghost gives me. One. Two. Patekete. Three. Shake it, touch, 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 that chain of bondage over your mind. Go ahead and declare, I am free. Declare it. Declare it. Hallelujah. Listen. I wish we had a VG. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please don't just let them go like that. We are not asking them to come out so people will see them. Come. Madam, look at me. Do you know what brought you out here? 
Look at me. You are married. You are married. Where are your children? Do you know what happened to you? Because I'm seeing every kind of bondage. The devil wants to take the lives of your children. I don't know you. I've never seen you. You believe God will set you free. You are a very nice woman. I'm seeing an old garment. A garment that looks as if they rubbed it inside Porto Porto and wore it on you. But in the name of Jesus, Satan, take your hands off her. Now! Now! By the power of the Holy Ghost. Janet! Janet! I'm hearing a name, Janet. Who is Janet? Please, we have, we, time is not on our side. Janet, there's no Janet here. Please come quickly. Janet. The last three digits of your GSM number is 677. The last three digits of your GSM number 677. Please quickly. 677. You are Janet. Where do you live? You live in Sabo. Who is sick in your family? You are the one? Come and stand here. My dad and my auntie. The last three digits of your phone is what? 677. Hallelujah. My dear, let me tell you something. God will bring a miracle in your family that will surprise you. Are you listening to me? Because your family is discouraged right now. They don't even believe that God. They, they are just trying. And if God does not intervene soon, they may be tempted to go into ways that are not of God. But there is a God who sits in heaven. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? We are out of time. Why don't you minister, John, for five minutes just as the Lord grants you revelation before we continue. In the name of Jesus, now! Be free by the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm seeing in the family, and in that family, there's one member of your family right now as I'm speaking, is behind the bar, is in the cell. I see that some fraudulent things happened that took that member of your family to the cell. God says you want to bring deliverance tonight. Who is that person? Just lift up your hands. I'm seeing your family member. I'm seeing one of your family members in the prison cell right now, a physical prison cell. God says he's going to bring deliverance tonight. I see that there are some things that transpired that had to do with fraud. Father Lord, we declare in the name of Jesus tonight. We declare supernatural breakthrough. We declare supernatural deliverance for such one. Let the mercy of God speak over that one and bring him out now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare mercy. I declare mercy for such one in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm hearing the Lord give me the name Naomi. And I'm seeing Naomi with an infirmity in her body. I don't know who that Naomi is. I'm seeing an infirmity around Naomi's stomach. If Naomi is here, just lift up Naomi, your hands. Naomi, are you here? Quickly, please, let's save time. If Naomi is here, just lift up That's your hands. Naomi coming, quickly. Please, let's save time. Just, just, just put your hands on your stomach right now in the name of Jesus. That sickness that you have been carrying for a long time, I command you be healed right now in the name of Jesus. I break that yoke of darkness. And I command total wholeness in the name of Jesus. Even that ailment that has to do with toilet and infirmity. I flush it out of your body right now. In the name of Jesus. And you live here supernaturally free. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed. In the name of Jesus. For the Lord is tonight bringing breakthroughs for family. Even with respect to business. God specifically speak about business breakthroughs for family. Amen. Business breakthroughs for family. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we prophesy tonight. We prophesy breakthroughs for family business. Amen. We prophesy breakthrough for family Amen. business. We prophesy breakthrough for family business. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Aaron, the Lord says there shall be no death. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For I'm seeing someone in your family. 
I don't know, maybe an auntie or a cousin, but someone in your family that is Yoruba by tribe. I'm seeing someone in your house right now, and I know that you are from Kaduna State, for I see a stink of death over that life. But the Lord said that you have had it tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Who is that person? Because I'm seeing the person right now in your house. It's my auntie. Yeah. I'm seeing her right now in your house. I'm seeing a sting of death over her life. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I break. I break that yoke and I command that deliverance right now. I command that deliverance right now. In the name of Jesus. For the spell is broken and her soul is escaped. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mommy, put your hands on your body. For I see the Lord doing a work of healing even around your stomach region. Am I saying the truth? I'm seeing something in your stomach right now. An ailment that the Lord is uprooting. And Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus, I command that you be broken. Be broken. In the name of Jesus. I declare total healing tonight. Total healing tonight. Total healing tonight. And for I see certain pains in your life that even has to do with marriage that the Lord is healing tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. It is done. It is done. Father, we thank you. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Josiah, just come and hold my hands. God says there shall be no death. God says there shall be no death. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray over his family and I declare tonight that there shall be no death in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It is done. It is done. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. This fair lady, look at me. Are you from the east? Are you from the east? Come. Father Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As I look at you, I saw like a figure, like a masquerade. I see like a masquerade that dance around your family. That's what I see. And the Lord says there are certain stagnation. There are certain limitations that the enemy has brought. Even yoke that has to do with marriage in your family. But the Lord says tonight, he breaks that yoke in the name of Jesus. I command marital breakthrough. Marital breakthrough. In the name of the Lord Jesus. For I'm seeing a family member somewhere around Onicha. I'm seeing your immediate family member somewhere around in the Onicha. For they have been struggling. And these ones I'm talking about, they have been struggling. Business is not moving, even marriage. But I break that yoke tonight in the name of Jesus. I declare breakthrough. I declare that the council of darkness is broken. In the name of Jesus. It's an to hear. Come, Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I like you to turn. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus. For I see a yoke that the enemy brought upon your life. And at a certain point, you had an encounter like, like a demonic spirit in the, in the form of a woman touch your hair and touch something around your hair. And you woke up with a strange experience around your hair. And from that time, certain sickness began to come upon your life. Am I speaking the truth? And it looked as though your hair was not going to grow and you were afraid. But I break that yoke in the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural growth. The sign that the Lord will give to you is that supernaturally, within the span of three months, supernaturally, your hair is going to grow. There's going to be supernatural growth in the name of Jesus. That yoke is broken. No more molestation in the seasons of the night for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are free. You are free. You are free. I declare, I, 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 I see right now, I cannot call some of the names that the Lord is giving me. Where I'm seeing certain ladies that you have been oppressed. You see like people come to sleep with you in the night. I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the fire of your deliverance come upon such ones. Let the fire of your deliverance come upon such ones. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Lord, we give you praise and we bless you. We give you praise and we bless you. You are free. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the inconsistency with your health, I declare total freedom to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the yoke is broken. The yoke is broken right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. All right, well, while Jake's ministers, if you invited someone who is sick, please let them come out now. If you brought someone, if you are an invitee, you came and you brought, uh, you are in need of a special, I want to minister to those who left. If you came with someone, please, um, just let them come here. While Jake's ministers, please let's be sensitive. We're out of time and we have to be fast. Hallelujah. Quickly, Father, quickly, please, so that we minister. Just quickly, I'll pray for two cases. Please listen because two cases the Lord reveals to me. No, just leave the people. Um, if they are under the anointing, just let them just shift them. Please are, come stand here quickly. I think there are people, specifically your right leg. Your right leg. It's almost as if it's a paralysis. There's an, Please come. There's those, a, who are, those who are in need of a form of a healing. You came your specifically. Sorry. Your right leg, specifically. Just lift up your hands wherever you are. Then the next set of people. Um, there's somebody with it's not migraine, you are feeling it as, like a screw right in front of your head here right in front of it who is that person, just quickly lift up your hands I'll pray with you, right now quickly, lift up your hands just lift up your hands those cases I call, whether outside, inside lift up your hands, lift up your hands Father I pray in the name of Jesus, just lift up your hands Father I pray in the name of Jesus Christ I ask that healing comes upon you right now in the name of Jesus Christ, that pain you feel in your head, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pull it out right now in the name of Jesus. And the pains in your bones, that form of paralysis coming upon your right leg in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the healing power of God upon it right now. The healing power of God comes upon it right now, right in the bones. Your nerves will begin to reconstruct right now in the name of Jesus because God is touching your yeah, somebody, God is touching your knees right now. Your knees, God is touching it and bringing healing and bringing perfection to your knees in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, blessed Lord. Thank you, blessed Lord. Hallelujah. Now we're out of time, but please those who came for healing you even if you are not you are not an invitee please it's time for us to minister to you right now quickly let's organize ourselves so we can do this very fast please pastor williams hallelujah it's time for us to minister to the sick now please i want you to believe you came you came so that we'll pray for you don't sit back jesus is a healer those of you who are standing please be praying for them and be praying for your families too Let's do that quickly, quickly. As we pray for you, check yourself. Check yourself. You find out there is power in testimony. Don't just keep quiet. God isn't playing. We are not playing games here, alright? Please. As soon as you are healed, the media people are the ones with the vest. Please, locate them very quickly. Very quickly. Hallelujah. Worshippers, help us. Thank you for lifting. 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 My head when I cry. When I pray, then understand you lifted my head. When I cry, when I pray, then I understand my head. Yo. 
of my glory and You're my glory, my glory and the lifter of my head. Oh, but thou, oh Lord, Lord, thou, oh Lord you are and a shield for me. You're my glory my and shield. My glory, my glory and the of my oh, but thou, oh Lord, thou, oh Lord, you are she for me. You're my glory. Thank you for lifting. Thank you for lifting my head when I cry. When I pray, didn't understand. You lifted. Oh, when I cry, when I pray. Then understand But thou oh Lord hey, You are You're my glory for their testimonies we'll just take a few testimonies and we'll be out please god is doing miracles right now some of those people you can come let's just have a few maybe three or four just as an evidence of what god is doing please just file up here quickly we'll take your
let's take these testimonies. Okay. Let's just say quickly, quickly. Please, I was blind. Now I see. All right. Let's save time. We're late. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. Actually, I want to testify to the goodness of God for my life. I was involved in a car accident that claims so many lives. And God spared me. What happened this night, right now? Something mysterious happened this night. My legs, quite all right, were not contracted. His legs, one was shorter. Who saw me praying for him here? One leg was shorter than the other, and he could not bend it because of the accident. I couldn't bend it because of the accident, but as the man of God just prophesied and prayed for me, suddenly, what I couldn't do before, I can jump. What could you, oh, okay, I do it jump, now. Do it now, right? Now. I can do it more than I could ever imagine myself. What couldn't you do? How were you walking before? But you could not bend your leg because one was short and the bone was pinched. Okay, now let's do what you couldn't do. Hallelujah. Lord, it Praise is the Lord. This is permanent in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. For some time now, I've had a um, little problem on the right side of my abdomen. I don't know what it is, but it's been there. It's a pain. I've been feeling for it. I didn't come out with the reason that while the word was going on, I received healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please rise up quickly. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I want to prophesy right now upon your life. Every door, every door that has been closed over your family, whether financially, whether maritally, katapa kapo kasipa, rakatopa kasupete malanaba. Now, in the name of the one who we serve. Jesus the Christ. I command that door open in the name of Jesus. Every barren woman in this place or everybody that is representing a barren family, I don't care if it's 100 years. The spirit that came upon Sarah, even when her body has been dead, I invoke the power of the Almighty. And I pray right now. The Bible says children are heritage from the Lord. Receive miracle babies. In the name of Jesus. Every project that you have started or your loved ones. And you have not been able to complete. I give three months from today. And I prophesy. I don't care whether it's a house. Whatever. Receive the miracle in the name of Jesus. You've been trusting God for a job. You have submitted CVs. You've done whatever. I pray to the one who promotes men. Who can take a man from a dunghill. I pray right now. In the name that is above all names. Without connection. Without bribery. Without Godfatherism. Receive a lucrative job. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah every shop every business that is dying or dead here come alive come alive come alive come alive come alive, come alive. Come alive. in the name of jesus every terminal disease here hiv hepatitis ss migraine hole in the heart heart problem infection Hallelujah. Reproductive challenges. If it has a name, it has a knee. Right now, I command it to bow and get out of your body in the name of Jesus. Those demonic dreams, like Janfa said, of all kinds of satanic molestation, whether sleeping with you in the night or bedwetting or all kinds of things. Right now, kapatika, rekete kotobaka, in the name of Jesus, I command it to be broken forever. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who is mentally derailed, whether you or a member of your family, we command right now, let there be perfect sanity this very hour. In the name of Jesus. 
those of you who are due for promotion whether it's in your jobs or you are standing in for your families i pray right now i invoke the power that took joseph from the well and in one day made him a prime minister may the lord lift you beyond your qualification receive it in the name of jesus everyone here whose prayer life has gone down whose word life has gone down you just watch your bible like a newspaper and a dictionary you pray for five hours and you are sleeping right now the bible says quicken us and we shall call upon your name let the spirit of prayer and supplication fall upon you fall upon you fall upon you fall upon you let a passion and a desire for the word of god a passion mental laziness i curse you in the name of jesus every habit that you came here with although you are a christian although you are born again there are all kinds of terrible habits from pornography masturbation every kind of devilish attitude lesbianism whatever it is called right now i set that devil on fire in the name of jesus be free in the name of jesus anyone here who is on drugs or smoking hallelujah or on all kinds of of drugs or medical things that you use to hype yourself and hallucinate and do all kinds of demonic things without withdrawal symptoms we break it now and forever in the name of jesus if there is any of your family member who has been missing who has been missing that they are looking for him the bible says the prophet told he told um, Saul he said the ass that your father is looking for has been found he didn't tell us who found it we pray in the name of Jesus that by the ministry of angels let your missing loved ones be found in the name of Jesus I pray for your academics right now a new session is about to start for those of you who have cried in the past I prophesy to you remember not the former things nor consider the things of old for tonight the Lord does a new thing he will rewrite your story receive it in the name of Jesus those who are students are on projects you should have finished but your supervisors are making things difficult I pray in one night pharaoh who said i will not let the israelites go the bible says they spoil the egyptians you will not only go you will go honorably in the name of jesus those who are awaiting admission in the name that is above all names in the name that is above all names we give you admission in this place in the name of jesus without bribery without corruption let the lord put your name in the admission list hallelujah and every strange manifestation of sickness in your body that you cannot explain but you can't deny the effect i pray right now that every demonic manipulation disguising itself as sickness we curse it by the light of god's power and we set you free from it in the name of Jesus did you bring prayer requests is there prayer requests okay while I pray usher stand at the edge please everybody just pass your prayer request to the last person we are still praying we are out of time pass your prayer request outside just pass it to the last person on your left now or right please let's do it quickly the prayer requests are not it's not just a formality we believe it's a prophetic contact we cannot pray for everybody one by one and there are people who are not able to be here for one reason or the other listen 
Let me tell you the scriptural backing of prayer request. The Bible says when the nations rose up against Hezekiah, they wrote a letter. The Bible says he took the letter and brought it to God in the temple and placed his request and said, Lord, look at this threat. Hallelujah. And God used the prophet and gave them victory. Please write quickly. Write things that are consistent in the scripture. Don't write, God, kill my mother. No. We won't pray that kind of prayer for you here. Please, quickly, quickly, ushers, help us. Let's do that quickly so that we can tidy up everything. Because everything you came in your heart with, God will step in and do it. Regardless of whether we are mentioning it or not, mm -mm. once you are in this atmosphere, just know that you are walking out free. All right, pass it quickly to the ushers. Ushers, let's have it. Please come up with it so that we can pray. Whenever I call you, you will answer me. Whenever I call on you, you will answer me. Elijah called on you and you answered him. The apostles called on you and you answered them. Abraham called on you and you answered them. This is why we know whenever we call you, you will answer us whenever we call on you you will answer us see take this prayer request thing seriously if you don't believe it don't write it please it's not just a religious jamboree we really mean it god answers prayers in this house please let's save time very quickly God is changing stories of families upgrading the quality of your life bringing you to a place where you will know that your God is alive giving you a testimony of being proud to be a Christian well, there is no one like my God there is no one, there is no one like my God. There is no one, there is no one like Quickly, my God. Quickly, ushers. There is no one, there is no one like my God. There is no one, there Let's have the ushers run with the prayer requests. Please make sure you participate. Please turn it, turn it. Make sure you participate in everything we are doing. It was packaged by God for you. There's a footballer that just dropped just dropped a prayer request to someone close to the door you are a footballer i don't mean you like playing ball you are a footballer is what you are doing who is that person outside you are a footballer there is no one there is no one stand up don't kneel down look at me god is going to honor you are you listening to me but you must represent jesus christ the football field is a ministry it's not a place to look for money and put in your pocket yes the financial rewards will come but realize you are an ambassador hallelujah don't be afraid of jesus christ because you are playing football wealthy football people are careless they do all kinds of things with money from drugs to ladies 
and they live a life of vanity and after years of representing their clubs they have nothing to show for it in eternity and in this realm may that not be your portion the lord said i should pray for you because many people do not believe that football can be a ministry god is sending you to the sports be disciplined ladies money pride pack your load and run away from these three things hallelujah make sure you are disciplined don't call what they call conspiracy conspiracy if you deny and reject the god that is taking you he will only step out and you'll come back hallelujah the bible says only a fool will say in his heart there is no god so we pray for you let the anointing of the spirit cause you to prosper let there be grace that you will play skillfully let there be grace that you will play skillfully in the name of jesus please let me ask the servants of god please just come out quickly we'll do this in one minute everybody stand up stretch your hands as though you are receiving we are praying for you go ahead and let's begin to pray we believe in praying for the requests we believe in praying for the requests lord bring miracles in the name of jesus you are a miracle worker we do not doubt this there are situations here that only you can change lord this week let this week be a week of change we invoke it let this be a week that you cause laughter to come upon our lips and that of our families you are able let this week let this month not end without you giving testimonies in the name of jesus we receive these prayers we receive the answers do impossible things let marriages health whatever challenge in the name of jesus i pray hallelujah father we thank you in jesus name lord we pray that even as they are written here so shall they be fulfilled in the name of jesus no one will be left out in jesus name thank you for families that are delivered in the name of jesus thank you for marriages thank you for admission thank you for breakthrough financially here and there in the name of jesus thank you father in jesus name hallelujah lift your hands i prophesy no limits in your life we stand with you under the anointing to break limits this week you will share a testimony that you not be, you did not believe will happen in your life and in your family if you believe it let there be a shout this week this week this week in the name that is above all names this week i provoke it i prophesy it financial miracles miracles of health promotion jobs if god be god this week this week in the name of jesus restoration this week restoration this week well you don't believe it i know i believe it restoration in the name of jesus joy in the name of jesus breakthrough real breakthrough many of you have not known what a breakthrough looks like i provoke it by the faith of the son of god receive it in the name of jesus lastly lift your hands i release an anointing upon you oh yes you will always be distinguished please lift your hands in the next one minute i want to pray we always do this you will go to be miracle workers hallelujah therefore at the count of three in the next one minute lord let your power let your unction for a new level you must be full of the holy ghost at the count of three the power of god will come upon people please everybody receive please everybody receive my god will do it in the next one minute inside and outside to cap up this meeting holy ghost go ahead one two three take it take it take it take it take it receive it receive it receive it receive it receive it, receive it. everyone under the sound of my voice if you can hear me let your spirit be open receive it receive it 
inside and outside a new level receive it receive it receive it that fire that anointing now now let your life be upgraded let your business be upgraded fresh fire fresh fire fresh fire fresh unction fresh favor favor the favor anointing take it the favor anointing take it receive it supernatural grace favor grace to heal the sick grace to cast out devils hallelujah for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life there are many of us here who the Lord is inviting I talked about total surrender to God and while you sat down listening to me the Holy Ghost began to speak to you the Bible says in the day that you hear his voice harden not your heart as it were in the days of the provocation therefore I pray God is ready to give everyone rest either you've given your life to Christ and you found yourself falling by the wayside again or this is your first time of making a decision for Jesus please leave your seat and run out here quickly appreciate them they are coming appreciate them they are coming leave your seat and come let no devil hold you hallelujah appreciate them they are coming appreciate them God bless you my sister inside and outside the Lord is calling you please leave your seat and come the miracle of being born again the Bible says heaven rejoices please motivate them come on keep clapping so your clap as a seed towards their salvation we believe in salvation we believe in soul winning welcome home welcome home we do not condemn you welcome home no matter what you have done no matter what you have done Jesus loves you please appreciate them appreciate them we came here because of you this is the biggest miracle bigger than any healing hallelujah praise the Lord thank you very much for coming please quickly pray this prayer say after me Lord Jesus please as loud as you can Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me I believe you rose again for me and this night by the power of God I repent of my sins in the name of Jesus I receive grace and eternal life in my spirit I declare that I'm born again in the name of Jesus I declare that I'm born again hallelujah I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus I denounce sin and Satan my name is in the book of life hallelujah congratulations thank you sweetheart look at this poor lady can you please appreciate her look at this lady making a decision for Jesus I love you and God bless you let me pray with you father preserve these ones in the name of Jesus thank you because they have honored you to make a real decision for Jesus we decree that no going back we break you from all the things that will attempt to take you back we declare that from today you are moving forward in life and in eternity in the name of Jesus Christ amen God bless you thank you so much please just follow the ushers to have your information in one minute and you'll be back hallelujah you're worshiping with us for the first time this is your first time of coming for our meeting this is koinonia we want to pray for you in one minute please for time's sake we'll plead that you just run out here quickly please rise up on your feet and come outside we know that there are those who were invited thank you god bless those who invited you if you invited anybody here i pray that god will invite men to bless you in the name of jesus you invited every anyone here whether your family members i prophesy upon your life and i mean it i prophesy upon your life may god invite your destiny helpers to connect you to the place of destiny keep clapping they are coming keep clapping they are coming glory to jesus Yahweh.
coming. This is Eternity Network International. Hallelujah. And this is our Friday program called Koinonia. This is a miracle service. Thank you so much for coming, taking out time and the sacrifice to be here. We love you and we appreciate you. I assure you that you will never be the same. Whatever you came here with, I pray that the God of Israel, the God we serve, will give you a real testimony that you will know that Jesus is alive in the name of Jesus. We want to pray and prophesy over you. We believe that we are anointed and if we pray for you, the Lord will answer you. Saints of God, stretch your hands and just bless them. Give them a testimony. This is our prayer for you. Lord, a real testimony that they don't need to tell others they came for koinonia. Give them a testimony that their works will speak for them at the gates. In the name of Jesus, impossible miracles. Let the Lord do it for you. If you've never had a passion for the Lord, we put a passion for the kingdom in you right now. That you will love the Lord with all your heart. You will love him more than money, more than life, whatever. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless our brothers and sisters. Our fathers and mothers, uncles and aunties who came all over in this city and around this nation. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will give you a real breakthrough. That this week, even as we are prophesied, the Lord will give you a mighty breakthrough. We thank you for coming and we pray that the Lord will bless you. In Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.